You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make a chasing LED circuit and how it works. Okay, so before we begin, I have actually gotten another letter. And so this letter is from Jackson Kerr of California. And so Jackson, thank you so much for the letter. Let's go ahead and place this letter up on the board. And so anyways guys, this project is going to be very simple, so let's jump straight into it. Here's the circuit that we're going to be using. Now you may notice that the capacitor values aren't filled in. This is because setting the capacitor value will have an effect on the LED connected up to it for the timing of it. And so really you can substitute whatever capacitor you want into here. But for this video I'm going to be using 47 microfarad capacitors. And so let's go ahead and prototype this circuit out onto a breadboard. At the moment I'm actually all out of 1 kilo ohm resistors. And so for this initial build out I'm going to be substituting in 680 ohm resistors for the 1000 ohm. And so I can start by connecting a 680 ohm resistor from the positive rail to an open rail down here. Next we can take an LED like this. Now LEDs have a certain polarity, meaning that you need to connect up the positive side to the positive and the negative side to the negative. There are a few ways that you can tell the difference. First off, if you just bought the LEDs, the one with the longer leg is going to be the positive side, while the shorter leg is going to be the negative side. But if you soldered it out of something, you can tell by looking at it this way. You can see that on the negative side there's a flat edge, while on the other side it's still just round. And so according to the schematic, we can connect in the positive side of the LED to the resistor, and the negative side over to the negative rail. The next component we need is a transistor. The transistors that I'll be using are these 2N3904 transistors. I'm sure that there are plenty of other transistors that'll work just fine, but I prefer these ones. The transistor has three parts to it. The base, the collector, and the emitter. That base collector and emitter correspond to the three pins you see on the transistor. For this particular transistor, if I position it so that the flat side is like this and the curved side is like this, then the pin out from left to right reads emitter, base, and collector. And so with our circuit, the collector needs to be connected up to the resistor, so we can do that by inserting it into the resistor rail. And then we can take a wire and connect it from the emitter to the negative rail. Now the base needs to be connected to the positive rail through a 10,000 ohm resistor. And so we can insert that resistor to the base rail and then connect it over to the positive rail. Next I'll be using this 47 microfarad capacitor. As you can see, these kind of capacitors also have a polarity. This side is the negative side, while the other side is the positive side. So as according to the schematic, I can connect the negative side to the base, and the positive side can just go over to an open rail. Now from here on out, we're just taking that chunk we just did and then attaching it to another chunk that's exactly the same. And you can see on the circuit that then to complete the chain, we have the other capacitor looped back around then connected to this 1000 ohm resistor. You can repeat this chain as many times as you'd like for as many LEDs as you'd like. But in case you don't understand that, let's finish building this out for the three LEDs. And so I can take another 680 ohm resistor and connect it from the positive end of that capacitor to the positive rail. Also connected to that capacitor, we connect another LED in the same way shown as before. And then we can connect that up to another transistor. And then we can take a wire from the emitter of that transistor to ground. And we can take a 10,000 ohm resistor from the base of that transistor to the positive rail. And then connect it up to the base of the transistor, we also have the negative end of a capacitor. And then a 680 ohm resistor from the positive rail to the positive end of the capacitor. And then we can insert another LED. And then we can connect that row back up to the collector of a transistor. And then the emitter of that transistor back to the negative rail. And from the base to the positive rail of that transistor, we can connect up a 10,000 ohm resistor. Now the final thing left to do in the circuit is complete the loop by connecting another capacitor from the beginning 1,000 ohm resistor up to the base of the last transistor. And so I'm going to connect the positive end to the collector of the first transistor. And then I'm just going to take a jumper wire to connect it all the way back around to the base of the last transistor. And as simple as that, our circuit is complete. And so now we can connect up a positive wire to the positive rail and a negative wire to the negative rail. And as you can see, when we do that, the LEDs start blinking on and off in sequence. Now currently it's set to 4.3 volts, so let's go ahead and turn it up and see what happens. Now we're at around 9 volts. As you can see, the voltage is having a direct effect on how fast the LEDs are blinking. At this point, we now have it set to 32 volts, so I don't think that could be that sustainable, so let's go ahead and turn it back down. Now knowing how to make a timing circuit like this can be very good for many applications. And in fact, for a school project, I'm going to be using this application of the timing LEDs to try and make a model of a neuron. And so now that we know that the circuit works, let's try and look at how the circuit works. Here on this computer, I've made a model on the current of the circuit flowing through it. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now if you want to view the simulation that I made for it all, I'll have a link in the description bringing you to this page right here. Down here we have the voltage being shown through to the capacitors. And so you can see that this capacitor is this one here, this capacitor is this one over here, and this capacitor is this one here. Now these red dots on here represent the LEDs that you can see blinking on and off in succession. Now watch the voltage line as this LED turns on. As you can see it dropped way down. Notice also that as the LED turns on, the voltage spikes up. And then while the other LED is on, we get a gradual drop in voltage for that capacitor. And so basically what you can see that we have here is that as this capacitor is discharging, the current is moving more this way a little bit. 
Now transistors act like electrical switches, where if electricity can flow from the base to the emitter, it'll allow it from the collector to the emitter as well. And so by this capacitor discharging, we're sort of shutting off this transistor. With that gate shut off, the electricity is going to go through the LED enough to make it light up. And so here you can see if I drop this capacitance by a little bit, it'll have an effect on the LED in front of it. And in fact, the time is around half as long. And so you can see from that that this LED was lit up a lot shorter than these other two were. And then you can also see that if I make the voltage a little bit higher, you can see that the LEDs begin to blink a lot faster. And so the two things that control the timing in the circuit are going to be first the capacitors, and then also the voltage where if it's higher it'll blink faster, and if it's lower it'll blink slower. Now of course, keep in mind in this simulation, there is no such thing as breakdown voltages and all that that will be affecting it. But in real life, if I were to apply 2 iva voltage to this, it would blow up the transistors because they couldn't handle it. And so if you guys want to play around with the circuit simulation at your home, I'll have that linked in the description below. And so now for one of the applications of this, which is going to be to make my school project model of a neuron, I'm going to make this only with 5 LEDs, so basically taking this middle part and repeating it a few more times before I connecting it to the end. And I'm going to solder all of that onto a perf board as meticulously as I can. And so I'll be right back with you guys when I have that completed. Okay, so here it is, I'll put out into a breadboard. Now admittedly, soldering all of these extremely close together is pretty hard to do to make sure to not get any false connections. And as you can see using my microscope, some of the connection points are extremely close together. And I suppose I should probably tell you guys about this thing. This is an LCD display microscope that the company Banggood sent me. As you can see, by zooming in on something like my breadboard here, we can get quite a bit of detail in. And so you can see here, for instance, that I can zoom up on things like as resistors or even just my finger if I wanted to. However, I think one of the coolest abilities that this thing has is that it gives you the ability to take pictures and videos from what you're looking at. And so here I have the video mode activated, so I'll display here what I can see. And so there's what the very fine line of ink looks like that I was writing with on the paper right here. And so although sadly you definitely can't see things like cells with this, it still is a pretty neat little product. One of the things they also gave me is this extremely cool USB telescope. And so by simply plugging in this telescope to a computer, it'll pull up what the telescope is looking at on the screen. And so here I have the telescope sitting on this desk pointing out of this kind of dirty window, and it's pointing at some trees around 175 meters away. And as you can see, the results from this are quite impressive. And to be honest, for the low price they're selling it for, I think this is a pretty fun thing to play around with. And so if you want to see more information about this microscope or the telescope, go ahead and click the link in the description below. And so anyways, going back to this thing, I have it all set up for that neuron presentation that I was talking about. And so here I have it all connected up for the model of the neuron. This is supposed to represent that a neuron gets ready to fire by having sodium on the inside and potassium on the outside, thus creating a voltage differential for it to be able to fire. And so by putting salt water on both sides, it allows it to be conductive, and then it flips a switch inside the transistor. And there we go. And so here I have the traveling lights to make it look like a signal is being sent down the axon. And when the red light is on, that's supposed to symbolize it being ready to spark over to the next neuron. And so if we hit the button, it sparks over. And so yeah, this is just one example of something you could do with the running LED lights. Now there are circuits that I've seen that use an IC to produce this effect. However, this is much simpler because you get to see the effect of what's going on. And also, you can apply this timing principle for whatever you really want. It doesn't have to be LEDs. So yeah, I think knowing how to build a circuit like that is a nice little bit of information to have for future projects that you may build. So now you know some of the principles behind how a timing circuit works and how you can use it to create flashing LEDs in sequence. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. And if you'd like to see my videos like this one, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so it'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. If you have a topic for a video you'd like me to cover, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you want to join the Discord server, that'll be linked in the description below. And that's kind of useful because you can get help on any project that you might have pretty quickly. And so guys, please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make your very own FM radio.